Today, let's do a quick review the SG90. This is a little small SUVO controller. Essentially, it's a motor in here with a gear train and some significant reductions going on. And there's a small circuit board inside here. Yes, barely visible. So I'm going to open it and have a look and see what they've done in here. These things are extremely cheap. They're under two US. There's a connector with three pins meant to go with Arduino and all these types of little boards. That's the microcontroller. Could you know put in some pulses and control. The brown is brown. The red is positive. The orange is the signal, which basically actuates it. So let it turn a fraction. Um, Thought I will get into the code on this particular review. I just want to have a look inside here, see how the board is made up, what chip they might have used, if that is in fact um, possible to get a look at. Um, beyond that, it should be straightforward to just remove, when I open this, remove the actual board and just use it straight. Um, from just the standpoint of it being a motor with a significant amount of gear reduction, it comes in very useful. I'll pull up the specs and mention that a little bit later on so we know what kind of torque we can get from it. But as I said, just being able to even power this directly, you can't practically get a motor in a gearbox altogether, essentially what you call a gearhead motor for, you know, under two years. That's, that's really not feasible. So even if you're not using it for precise control, it's going to be a useful device to pick up at the price point. I've removed the four screws on the bottom. These are pretty long screws. I didn't quite expect that. I thought it would split here on this line. Uh, apparently it does, but this tag is holding it together. So I need to get rid of this tag, possibly cut it across and get rid of it. That said, I did not expect this to be a separate piece and this to come off completely. As you can see, this is the gear train and there's a bit of reduction from that gear to this, that reduction, that reduction, that one. I've been a, little, a bit lazy to go through and count this. If you look on the side here, you would see they put two little tabs. Those little tabs are to ensure it doesn't make a full 100 uh, well, 360 it doesn't continue spinning or rotating aimlessly so if you cut those tabs off you can get this to just continue rotating and be in fact a gearhead motor put it onto something like a maybe a bolt and use it you know as a linear actuator instead of what it is right now so this can go from just being you know a half rotation one way half rotation the next way to being a full linear actuator with very minimal effort actually so I'm going to cut this, open it up and have a look at the board inside. Okay, first look inside, as you can see, there's an IC there. There seems to be a number on it, so I'll pull that off. And basically, yeah, there's the motor on the other side and the two contacts. So it's really a trivial matter just to bypass this whole board and go across to that motor. Well, how price is open, it's not as simple as I thought of it. I'm seeing a tantalum capacitor there. But further down inside there, which is a little difficult to focus and see, but there's a full set of contacts. So apparently there's some feedback on this side and this cutting those things may not actually work. There's a feedback in there that tells it when it reaches its limit, the cut off. I suspect that's what it does, but there are some copper contacts and there's a screw in there. And that looks like it is possible. I'm not sure if it's visible. I'm not sure if it's focusing well enough, but that screw there. It would be possible to take that out, take those contacts out, bypass it. A little bit more than I initially thought, but again, this is not an impossible situation. Anyway, that really wouldn't matter if you were to cut those off and not use the control board anyway. So it wouldn't really affect you if you were just using it as a straight gear head motor. Which again, as I said, you cannot get for this kind of price point. Jumping back now to the IC. The controller is the KC8801. On the screen you can see an application uh, example from the manufacturer. It's in Chinese. I'll show the next screen shortly. Um, but it does show where the motor is and how it all connects and 
I guess how you can use it. Um, I didn't see that many components on the board, but then again, I didn't pull out the whole bottom of the board to really properly investigate. So moving on to the next shot here. This is the specification for the manufacturer. This is all I could find. It's lovely when you get it all in Chinese. But again, well, not all in Chinese. I mean, you see VCC 7.5 volts, um, the current 950 ME. Um, what is that source uh, power dissipation so there's a bit of information here now interestingly the tab below has it as vcc 4.8 volts several of the uh, specifications you say 4.8 volts um, 5 volts and arduino 4.8 volts mm, same difference so jumping on now further onto the sg90 the entire module specification and as you can see the weight dimensions um, not very useful stall torque and that gives us a good idea of how much power we can really put in this very small motor lots of reduction it's not a bad torque and uh, the operating speed right so it's 0.1 seconds it goes 60 degrees which is I guess reasonably fast 4.8 volts as we said 5 volts a dead bandwidth and the temperature range um, again that goes more when you get into the program at a later date I will do a follow-up on this microsurfer and how it's controlled by the Arduino the code side it's really simple when you use libraries but I want to delve a little bit further so I'm gonna have to jump in that rabbit hole and see how those libraries function what's the finer points and as I said that could get a bit complex because one thing calls the other calls the other so but if you use the libraries it really is not the hardest thing to control